Well, hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. Today we're working on this truck camper. There's an issue with its converter. Uh, it's, it's cooking batteries. Uh, the customers put a battery in it and I don't know how long it's taken, but the battery is totally dry, dry plates. And um, when I was called out, I put my meter on it and the converter is putting 17, 18 volts into the battery usually not healthy. Now there may be some of you that might take that converter apart and try to figure out why and what and wherefore. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just swap the part out because I'm not going to take this converter apart. The the box you'll see I'll bring you in here in just a minute. It's kind of tight quarters, but they, the case is riveted closed. So now I've got to draw out rivets. As a company, now I'm liable for opening up a case. So I would just as soon put a new converter in. Um, and that's what we're gonna do. Now, I've already started the job. It's at the end of my day. I've already had five customers already. So this is the fifth customer, so four customers prior. And it's at the end of the day, and I had a few minutes um, to basically put a little video together. I wanna to add value to you in case you're cooking your batteries as well, or you test your converter, and it's putting out uh, 17, 18 volts. Not healthy. Um, if you look on your converter, it'll tell you the output rating. Normally, a converter that we find on RVs is gonna uh, produce 13.6 volts. If you're going to charge a 12 volt battery, you need to charge it with a, you need to charge it with not 12 volts because that's just like a trickle charger is going to keep it even. You need to give it a little bit of a boost. 13.6 is what the spec is on this. Your starting batteries, uh, they like to see 14.6 or something like some somewhere in the 14s. Okay, uh, converter for your RV somewhere in the 13s, and the battery itself is somewhere in the 12s. We'll go with the word somewhere in the 14s. So if I'm testing a circuit and I'm the engine's running and I got a 14, I know I'm coming from my alternator. If I'm testing a circuit and I got in a, somewhere in the 13s, I know I'm coming from a converter. So these are just some, hmm, hmm, hmm. It's not exact science, but it gets you close. It kind of gives you an idea. Um, so we're going to take you inside. We're going to show you some of this. I've already started working on this, and that's when I decided, well, here, let me throw the camera on a tripod and mic myself up with this thing, and we'll take you inside tight quarters. Um, let me take a moment. If you've watched my other videos, I'm going to make a link to one that I did on another converter. It had a different problem than this one, so I'll make a link to that one. And um, I've also done a video. I don't remember the title of the video. I'll make a link to that one as well. It, it, it explains Darren's version of how electricity works. And um, uh, these are unscripted. I just sit down and start talking to you. So now I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to tell you the differences between a converter and an inverter. Um, and I'm just going to roll through this. This is this is kind of an easy way for it to make sense without getting into all the theory and, and stuff like that. So converter, inverter. Let's do that, and then we'll jump in here and show you that. Um, so it all starts with let's we got to start somewhere right we got to begin our trail so let's start with plugging your coach into shore power okay so you got your rv you're going to plug it into a shore cord you can take a shore cord plug it into power what you're going to get through that power is an alternating current back and forth back and forth back and forth like waves in the ocean up and down up and down and if you were to look at that on a on, on oscilloscope you would see the plus and the minus the plus and the minus the plus is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 240 volts the minus is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of zero the average is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 120. that is not technically accurate okay but go with me on this because i'm just trying to create a concept in your brain so that you can tell the difference between a converter and an inverter okay um so then you have the rms and how to read all that i at this video i'm not going to get into all that i know i'm going to get some comments from some of you electronic techs that are going to tell me the right way to do it and that's great you can go read about those down below just trying to paint a picture here a little puffy cloud a little squirrel over here on the side so when you have your ac sine wave going up and down and up and down and up and down and that is alternating current but everything in your rv is going to run on direct current you need to charge your battery okay so the battery is to charge your battery, you need to take that 120 volts alternating current, AC, and convert it to 12 volts DC. I did say convert there. That was not a trip of the tongue. We are going to convert 120 volts AC to 12 volts DC. And so if you're going to convert something, you look at that AC sine wave that's going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And you're going to take every down and you're going to flip it up. Okay, you're going to flip the, the downs to ups. So where your AC, alternating current, is up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Now when you flip those up, it's going to go up, 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 up. Okay, alternating current, up, down, up, down. All together now like a bicycle pedal, up and down, your power strokes. DC is all up, 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 up. So we have converted the downs. We're going to convert them to ups. We are converting that alternating current to a straight current. That's converting, 
That's why they call them converters. Inverter is going to take the up, 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 and every other one of those ups, it's going to invert them to down, creating an up, down, up, down, up, down. I have inverted every other up to a down. So converter is going every, every down to an up. Inverter is going to invert every other up to a down. Therefore, you have, you're able to, to make it DC or AC. Okay. Um, I will make a side note on the inverter. There's typically two types. You have a pure sine wave and a modified sine wave. And this AC thing that's called the sine wave, the up, down, up, down, up, down, that's an AC sine wave. Some of your electronics do not like the modified sine wave because it's basically looking at, you know, those bar graphs when you're listening to music and all these little things are popping up. Visualize that in your mind. If it's, it's like a stair step up and a stair step down and a stair step up. That's the modified sine wave that your inverter is creating. Okay. Or you can have a pure sine wave where it's more of a an analog flow instead of this digital stair steppy thing so it's more of a slide up and down instead of a stair step up and down okay so you have the modified sine wave and the pure sine wave modified sine wave is much much less money than the pure sine wave but sometimes you don't have the choice you read your specs on your thing and it, it may not say it needs a pure sine wave but if you're going to use a cpap machine at night if you're going to run anything electronics computers they're going to want that pure sine wave because if you run them on a modified sine wave, they're going to get really hot and they may not like you and they might burn some stuff up. So unless you know for a fact that you can run a modified sine wave inverter, let's just pay the extra money and get the pure sine wave and everybody's happy. You don't create all this heat inside of your, your stair steppy thing. That's really all I wanted to say about the converter and the inverter. Uh, if you want, let me know and I can go into much more detail on those, but what we're dealing with on there. So I'm done with that. Let's jump back into the job site here. Um, we have a converter. Now we know what a converter is converting. Okay. And, um, I took my meter in there and I was probing on it. I've already got some wires taken apart. I'll bring you in. I'll show you, but it's just, like I said, it's really tight quarters. So it's a beautiful day out here. So let's, let's, I could use my hands when I'm talking. Right. Um, now what I'm going to show you in there, there's, you have two choices. So if your converter is integrated into your power panel, power distribution panel, that is to say you have your breakers over here and your fuses over here, and that converter is integrated into this one box, and we find out that the converter is bad, you basically have two options, probably two options, okay? Uh, we could probably get in a committee and think of some more options, but let's just go with two options right now. The first option is just to wholesale replace the entire everything, the entire power distribution panel with your breakers, and you could just replace the whole thing. That's one option. Nothing wrong with that option. It's a good option. But there's nothing wrong with the breaker side. There's nothing wrong with the AC side. The problem's with the inverter. Hey, a third option. I just thought of it. Um, some manufacturers will allow you to just replace the converter part of your entire panel. Okay, so I, I just came up with a third option. Did you see that? The first option, replace the whole freaking thing. That's option one. Option two, replace if, if the manufacturer builds it so that you can swap out just that converter. Turns out this manufacturer did not. Their whole case is riveted closed. Um, but I know that Wolfco has one where it's just two screws, the whole thing comes out and you just unplug it and put a whole brand new converter right in its spot. Uh, that's option two. Option three, which is the option I'm gonna go with today, is orphan the converter that's built into the power distribution panel, just orphan it in place, put a new separate converter, there's plenty of room in here to do that, put a new separate converter off on the side, and then let that separate converter back feed into the fuses. Okay, you'll see what I'm talking about here. So you don't need to replace your whole um, can't panel. This manufacturer's got everything riveted, so I can't replace just the converter part easily, okay, without voiding warranties and everything. Uh, so in this instance, the only option they give me is to replace the whole thing or just put in a converter. So I'm gonna put in a separate converter. And with all that being said, let me take you inside give you a, a tour of what I've already started to do. And then um, let's get busy with some, some actual work here. Okay. Okay. So um, here's, here's a job. Like I said, very tight quarters and I've got all the, I've got the lights off in here, um, but I am plugged into shore power just so I can get some readings and my battery is connected because I want to get some readings and I'll show you what I'm seeing here. So this here is the, um, the panel. It doesn't matter the name. But here you've got some rivets, and I'm not going to mess with the rivets. I'm not even, I'm not even going to try to bench test this to find out what's wrong with this thing, okay? But if we are connected here, and I've got my breakers off on this panel, but um, okay, so I'm on DC. I don't know if there's a glare, but I'm going to read you what that says. So I'm going to turn my breakers on, okay? 
the fan on this thing turned on and I'm going to use that as a ground reference because the case is ground to the frame. And um, this wire right here comes from my converter. So I got 24 volts coming out of a converter that's only supposed to give me 13.6. Um, okay. And um, now when I'm, this is the lead that goes to the battery. And the battery is connected. So here our battery is 12.6, 12.7, 12.8. So my battery is fully charged. Okay. And... Um, Put him back on. Uh, so the converter, the fan is running on the converter, and I got 25, 26, 20, 25 point six volts DC out of a converter that's 20, 25 point seven. That's supposed to be outputting 13 point six. Okay. Now when I connect this to my battery, I'll do it just real quick here. Okay. Little sparks right there. Um, we're connected. Now we're down to 15.8, 15.9. Um, when I got here, it was giving me closer to 17. Okay, so as my converter starts to work a little bit, his voltage goes down. But I would like to see a nice steady 13 volts here, um, or 13.6, which is what is not not 25. So I understand what's happening here, but I also understand that it's cooking our battery, and I also understand that this fan is running. Usually the fans run when the thing gets hot because he's working really hard. He's not working. He's not doing anything. Why is a fan on? So um, it says right here, uh, let's see where it's going to tell us that input. Uh, okay, here it is. Output, 13.5 volts DC, 30 amps, 13.5 volts DC. Okay. And uh, so we know that this is the lead. So, so here's here's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so this is 120 volts hot. Take that off. Okay, there. So this is the this is the leg that wants to get 120 volts that feeds this converter right here. I've just taken him off. I'm gonna orphan this. Okay, so he's dead. And back over here, this is the converter that I'm going to be installing, and I'm gonna be doing it in there. I'll, I'll move you around so you guys can see what I'm doing. And so this converter, they're going to give me two leads, so I've got to go get some wires here to screw into that. Here's my ground lug, okay? And then the, here's a fan. And um, this one's going to give me, what, 13.6 volts, 45 amps, okay? So I have opted to orphan. I'm going to still use the breakers. I mean, this truck camper does not have a microwave. It, the water heater is gas only. The only thing you need the AC for is to run the converter and maybe some convenience receptacles. And that's it. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing in this RV that runs, I'm looking around, this is a really simple one. It's the kind of truck camper where the, the roof collapses down a little bit. So, um, uh, so yeah, so let me pick you up and show you. So here, let me just do it this way, guys. Hold on, there we go. Okay, so here we are. There's a tripod there, sorry about the shadow. So right in there is where we're working. I've taken the step out. And if I look down in here, you see I've got plenty of room to put that other converter and it's gonna have plenty of room to ventilate itself and, and be happy, okay? So let me, um, so yeah, here we have one of these kind of soft sided campers here. It's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, we have, okay. So the refrigerator can work on 120 volts. Um, stove, no bathroom here. Um, so yeah. And then a couple convenience receptacles. So there's no major load in here and there's not even an air conditioner. So I would even go so far as to say I could probably, all right, I could probably reduce the incoming power instead of a big 30 amp plug. I could probably reduce that down to like a, um, 20, 20 amp plug. Um, because you're always going to be using these adapters. There's nothing in this RV that requires 30 amps at all. Um, so now you're back in your holder there. So I'm going to get busy clipping this together and I'll take you along the journey. Um, let me get some work done here, but I wanted to kind of share with you what this is. Maybe you have the same problem where you see the converter is putting out power and the battery. Two things. One, the fan's running constantly. That was one of the complaints. Two, the battery is being cooked because it's being charged at a much higher rate than it should be. Brand new battery. That's a brand new battery over there. And it should not be giving it 15, 16, 17, 18 volts. 
It should not. Um, so yeah, let me uh, mount my thing in there and I'll bring you back in here in just a few minutes once I get some stuff done. But I need to get some room and I love you guys, but you're kind of in my way. <laughs> so here we go. All right. Okay, I've already started putting the converter in its position and I figured let me take a moment and explain to you how I'm going to be doing the wiring. Because remember I said I was going to orphan the converter in place it's, that's down here in this one. So follow with me on this. Okay, we know that this wire right here is the one that is feeding the converter that's inside of here. And we also know that when I put 120 volts AC on this wire, this job, this big heavy bulky thing, its job is to convert the AC to DC, we already talked about that. Okay, and the output of this product is voltage on this wire right here, this wire right here. Okay, you can see these coming out of the back end of that guy with me. So that is to say that if I am, let me, let me, let me pause, catch my breath and make sure I'm explaining this right. What I need to do is this converter that's in here, he's, he's going to stay right there, but I'm going to orphan him. That is to say, I'm going to cut this wire off and my new converter is in there. Okay, so I need to take this cord that's plugged in to the back. I'm trying to look at what I'm doing and make sure you're in the shot at the same time. And so let me bring it back over here. So here we have the plug that's connected to that new converter. Okay, so here I have a Romex wire coming in and I'm going to basically pop this Romex out and I'm going to feed this guy in with him. And then I'm going to connect, I'm going to cut this cord off and I'm going to strip it back. And I'm going to connect the, the black wire in this cord to where this black wire went under that wire nut. The white is going to go with my white bus. And inside of there, it's kind of tight to see. So basically, the white, hot, the, the neutral, the hot, and the ground that we're feeding this converter in this junction box right here are going to be orphaned. And now I'm going to take this neutral hot and ground and wire in its place. So the converter is no longer going to be in this box. It's going to be over there. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. But that's how I'm going to get the AC in. I think earlier in my opening statement, I had talked about how this is an appliance. So this is the appliance and that in there is the appliance. So we're going to feed our appliance with 120. Okay. Right now he's fed with this wire. We're going to cut him off. We're going to feed the other one with this wire. So we're going to physically leave him here, but we're going to not use the AC side of this. The output of this converter feeds this wire. So I take this wire right here and the output of that converter, it's going to be one of those two wires down there, is where I'm going to connect it's such tight quarters in here. This wire that was coming out of this converter is now going to be connected to the new converter out. And I'm going to tie my battery in together. This wire here goes to my seven-way plug on my truck camper, on my on my, tr on my tow vehicle, my tr the, the, the truck where the truck is connected to the seven-way. So that when I'm driving down the road, 12 volts from the truck is energizing this, charging my battery as I'm driving on the black wire. So therefore, my battery... This big one's a battery. This is the battery from the truck towing it. This is coming from the converter. They can all be tied together and they can all be tied into where are we at down there. Um, the let me get my hand in there. The plus on this. So there we go. See the big red plus right over there. Okay. So those all are going to be tied together, making the converter an integral part of my battery system. Okay. So they're all tied together as the output of the converter. Okay. And then not only will this wire here, see this wire is going to back feed and feed my fuses right here. Okay. I hope that makes sense. It makes perfect sense to me. Um, but, um, and I've even done this same type of a job on much larger RVs where there's a lot more fuses. This is a small one. We could probably pull this 30 amp out because this green one is the one that's protecting this guy. We don't need him in there anymore. I'll leave him in there anyway. But um, so we're going to, instead of the converter internally feeding these fuses, we're going to externally feed these fuses from the wire here that comes out of this converter. Okay. So let me make that happen. And it'll all make sense when we throw power on this thing and you see it working. Okay. We're 
kind of got everything connected in there. Uh, so there we see we got the converter um, connected in, screwed to the ground. We got our ground wire on the other side over there. Okay, so this is the black wire I was talking about earlier, and I put on a new strain relief connector here, and I piggybacked him with that same spot. Uh, I like these Wago connectors. I'm going to say Wago instead of Wago. I think that's a short vowel with the A and a long vowel at the end, O. <laughs> Wago, Wago. So I'm going to say Wago. And uh, I like the Wagos because they're spring clamps. There, Be advised, there are some aftermarket connectors, spring clamp connectors like this. And they are crap, man. They fall off. So if you're going to go with this style, make sure you go with the Wago, not the off-brand ones. Um, and so here's my ground. One thing I didn't mention on the earlier part was the neutrals all go to, um, or the grounds all go bonded to ground. And um, so... Having said that, it's go time, okay? So I'm plugged into shore power, and we've got our power on. So what that means is our converter now has 120 volts feeding it. We know that because um, our converter wire is connected to all this. That was a wire nut originally. So let's turn our meter on here, and uh, let's see. Can you guys see? I'm on AC right now, okay? Okay, so we're on AC, so... Um, we know that our converter is getting power, so I'm going to go over to DC here, and again, I'm going to use the case of this as ground, and uh, I'm just going to test this. So I've got 13.6 volts right there, and isn't that what the converter said it was going to output, 13.6? The box here, its converter was 13.5, but it was putting out 15, 16, 17, I even recorded it up to 18. So 13.7, if I turn the breakers off, uh, here's 13.5, and it'll eventually work its way down to battery voltage. Okay, 13.4, and uh, so I'm going to turn the breaker back on, jumps back up to 13.6. So um, I'm much happier with this converter than I was with the other one, and if we were to go out to the battery, it would be being charged at 13.6, which is a healthy um, voltage to charge at. Um, these are the neutral and the hot that we're feeding this converter, and that is now orphaned in place. We are now feeding through this black wire the new converter, which is tucked in the back. And um, I've got all my converter 12 volt bonded together. I've got a, a five way Wago here. Um, and so the battery is integrated into all of my 12 volt circuits. The red wire that feeds this fuse panel here is coming in from the battery. And then that leaves me with the brown, yellow, and blue. In this instance, there are different manufacturers that will number their wires, letter their wires, or come up with different colors. So I didn't mess with any of these wires in the coach. So with that, um, I have to now button all this up and connect it all back in there. Well, I gotta put my junction box cover back on on the, on the front. And, um, but if this was helpful, if it added value about converters, a couple options, the differences between converters and inverters, give me a thumb up. I appreciate that. Uh, you can subscribe to our Patreon channel. We've got, uh, we're developing content that's exclusive just for our Patreons and, um, happy camper say my RV works. So, um, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.